So today, as you can see from the title of the slides, I'll be talking about an amalgamation of things that I've seen related to client throughput cases and Meraki support. And while I'm here talking to you all, the rest of Meraki support is holding the fort down so nothing burns. It's a story that's all too common. I think this is a little. It's a story that's all too common. A user calls and say, my application's slow, my experience is terrible, WebEx doesn't work, Zoom doesn't work, I'm having an awful time, what's going on? Your support engineer says, don't worry, we're gonna run a speed test, everything's just gonna be just fine. <laughs> so you do that, you got your speedtest.net, you run a little test, you get some output, but there's a problem here. How do we know this is the problem and how do we even know if 230 megabits per second is even something good, bad, the indication of the problem that we're dealing with? And everything subsequently goes on fire with your customer. So uh, to explore that question, we'll be going through a series of things. It's just a little menu of what we'll be exploring. First of which, why you would even test throughput, then how to establish a reasonable baseline for your particular environment. After that, we'll move into some physical layer causes for throughput degradation. After that, we'll talk about the fun stuff, the protocol causes for throughput degradation. And lastly, I'll put it all together in a way that you can actually take and use in your environment. So first off, why would you even test throughput? And the inherent answer is somebody's complaining about a certain application that doesn't work like it should, and they're having a poor experience with that application. In other cases, you'll get uh, somebody that swaps out new APs uh, for an install, and they say, hey, I swapped out, I just did a new install, I got 500 megabits per second before, now I'm getting 300 megabits per second, what the heck is going on, everything's on fire, and it's terrible. Which, whichever the case, uh, we'll be able to explore that and we'll have to know the reason why to really dig down as to see whether we should be even be looking at throughput in the first place. Moving onward, I don't advise looking at throughput tests until you're familiar with a few topics and you're comfortable with them, namely the difference between data rate and throughput. Uh, probably a lot of you in the room know the difference between these two, but just in case, think of data rate as I'm driving down the highway, the speed limit on the highway says 55 miles per hour, or kilometers uh, for those of you that don't live in the US. Uh, the throughput, on the other hand, is more like the actual speed that you're driving down the road. So for example, you're driving down this 55 mile per hour road, and you're actually driving 25 miles per hour because there's traffic and uh, everything's on fire. So uh, in addition to that, I would also advise ruling out whether your throughput issue, your test that you're doing, is something that happens when you only have one client connected to the AP at the time, or something that happens when you have 15 clients connected to the AP at, at a time. Because the nature of those two issues are different. If you have one client connected to your AP at a time, and you see poor throughput, uh, that's probably maybe related to the nature of uh, RF in the environment. It might be uh, something else entirely, rather than just hitting the maximum capacity on your AP. Next of which, if you specifically have an issue with a tunneled SSID, I would say stop right there because tunneled SSIDs, specifically if your data traffic is being tunneled elsewhere, uh, they have a natural limitation on the amount of throughput you're going to be able to push because of um, tunneling and encryption and all those fun things. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, lastly, the topic of spatial streams. Uh, if you imagine having multiple lanes on the highway that you can drive down, uh, you know, you can either send different lanes of traffic down two lanes or you can squish them together and send a double wide trailer. Just have a vague notion of what spatial streams mean and how they impact throughput. Now, how to actually establish a baseline for your particular environment. First of all, uh, get familiar with the hardware that you have on hand. So uh, the size of the radios for your APs and clients, the number of spatial streams, um, assuming here that you've already gone and gotten your MCS index rates. Uh, generally, your client, of course, will be more constrained than your APs. Particularly, you wanna pay attention to the uh, maximum data rate on the MCS index that you can get for your client. 
especially if it, your issue happens only with one client at a time, because what's going to happen is your AP can do 2,000 megabits per second data rate, whereas your client that only has two spatial streams will only do 500 or 1,000 or however much per uh, size channel that it's using. So in that sense, just be aware that your client is your main constraint. And lastly, the Wi-Fi generation. So if you are using multiple BSSID or not, that's going to have an impact on management overhead, which will have some changes on your uh, throughput that you can use. So for example, if you're using an older MR26, uh, I would call a vintage Meraki AP, that's going to look a lot different in maximum capability compared to a newer uh, 9178 that does Wi-Fi 7 and multiple BSSID. Excuse me, okay. So let's explore the actual tools that people use to do throughput tests. Uh, the first of which the most often I see is speedtest.net, uh, which is great, but you need to be aware of what it's actually doing to rule out whether that's the best test to assess the problem that you have. That being said, speedtest.net is TCP, ju it just does TCP. So keep that in mind if you might be having issues with video calling where it's UDP, not TCP. Again, something to keep in the back of your head. Additionally, it's testing your uplink to a group of servers, you know, usually an ISP will have servers uh, close to your proximity in the area that it's testing to. Uh, so on the other hand, iperf3, which is what I've, most people use to do throughput testing locally on the LAN, on the other hand, you have the option to use UDP, but it'll be TCP by default. So if you need to specifically test UDP, you will need to add the option and keep that in mind. Additionally, there's some quirks with iperf3, mainly uh, version 3.16 of iperf3 introduced, uh, introduced multi-threading. So if you're using an older version of iperf3, be aware of that because even with the same uh, test, theoretically, if you're using different versions of iperf3, you'll notice some performance differences. And uh, it's, you can't use it for Windows. I would recommend using iperf2 for Windows. I uh, think that's the last thing there. So we do the speed, uh, we do the throughput test. How do we know how much is quite enough? Well, I pulled this chart from Ookla, the makers of speedtest.net, because I think it's quite handy and explains pretty well what to expect generally. I specifically hover around the 100 megabit per second mark. If your throughput is significantly less than that, I'm definitely thinking there's an issue going on and that you know maybe it's congestion, maybe there's driver issues. Uh, that's generally where I hover and start questioning things. If you come to me and say, oh, I'm getting 200 megabits per second, maybe I'm not questioning as much if you're having a poor client experience unless you're doing something specifically that needs really high data transfer rates. So let's move on to the physical factors, the R factors that impact throughput degradation. The first of which uh, might be helpful is looking at your radio tap header. This is RF information that's inserted by the caption client driver, so you can have some contextual information on the RF environment as you're doing your PCAP. Great. So the antenna signal and no noise per frame will tell you generally what's going on. If you have really good signal across all data frames, uh, maybe you can rule out an RF issue. If the noise signal to noise ratios are right, yeah, maybe that's not the first place to look. But it's something there to help you. And you can also confirm the frequency, channel, um, channel width, and other things too, depending on what's supplied by the capturing driver. So a particular thing to watch out for, I know uh, it seems like a lot of people have been talking about narrowband interference today. I'm going to talk about it again. <laughs> so narrowband interference, uh, things from all your IoT, Bluetooth, Zigbee devices. The insidious thing about narrowband interference specifically is that your packet capture signal strength still might read OK because it's only occupying this much of the channel and not you know, the whole 20 megahertz space. So keeping that in mind, a way you might be able to detect if there's some RF funky business going on is if the retry rate, uh, if you see a lot of retried frames in your packet capture, you can use uh, the filter WLAN FC retry equals true. Now, generally, you're going to have retries in your environment, some of them. But if you see an excessive amount, say I put that filter and it's 30% of the total traffic that's in my PCAP, maybe there's a RF problem going on. So that's something to keep in mind that could help you narrow down uh, why your throughput is not as good as you think it should be. <laughs> 
So the protocol aspect of things, this is the, the fun part. First of which, specific to layer four, uh, keep in mind things like speedtest.net, even iper 3 will use it by default. And if your concern is with an application using uh, large data file transfers, even things like YouTube, that's going to be a TCP uh, affair as opposed to UDP. On the other hand, UDP speed tests should be closer to the actual data rate or you know, closer than TCP would be, and that's mostly because it's not subject to things that affect TCP, such as con congestion, avoidance mechanisms, maximum segment size, uh, some of the other things that are specific issues for TCP. And additionally, if you're specifically having an issue, let's say with Zoom or WebEx, uh, take a look at UDP throughput testing specifically because it will affect UDP ports specifically as opposed to TCP. Last, oh, uh, not lastly. Well, one of the thing that people talk about most when it comes to throughput degradation is management overhead, particularly with the number of SSIDs that you have in the environment. Generally, I've seen people hover around recommending three SSIDs. I would say anything above five is the danger zone, and unless you're using multiple BSSID, that's when you're going to start noticing a noticeable decrease in throughput. Uh, it's not so much of a concern with multiple BSSID, but the problem is how do you actually know you're using multiple BSSID? You will see the multiple BSSID tag in your management beacon frames. So I did a little test. I've got three APs. I tried to pick ones that were roughly similar radio size, but they're all different generations. So I've got a Wi-Fi 7 AP, a Wi-Fi 6E AP, and lastly, a Wi-Fi uh, AC Wave 2 AP. And what I did was I connected it, I ran a iperf3 test using my WLAN Pi, uh, using a uh, low power channel. And in this case, I'm not using multiple BSSID, and I just wanted to see what would happen as I increased the number of SSIDs in this test while keeping all the other parameters the same. So in this case, my client is my MacBook Pro, it's two spatial streams, and the result was that in, for the the MR42, the older AP, I think was the least impacted, but uh, in that sense, it also didn't really start out with the highest throughput in the first place. Uh, after that, the MR57 and the 9176 definitely noticed as I increased from one to three to seven SSIDs, all beaconing and broadcasting, a noticeable difference with the average receiver throughput with the iperf 3 test. Now, the interesting thing with this was I noticed that the management traffic, when I actually inspected and filtered for management frames, it wasn't all beacon traffic. In fact, the bulk of the traffic was these probe uh, requests coming from clients misbehaving that had no business connecting to any of my SSIDs that I've never seen before in my life. And naturally, the AP is going to send probe responses back. So all those things together made up the management traffic. But when we say management overhead, we literally mean management overhead. It's not just beacon frames. It, it could be anything that's a management frame. On the other hand, I decided to do a second test, this time with multiple BSSID enabled with a Wi-Fi 7 client, uh, so I had to switch around with my iPhone and my MacBook doing the iPerf test. In this case, we don't see quite as much of a difference. I mean, there's little fluctuations naturally just because of the negotiated data rates and things, but uh, generally fared a lot better than not using multiple BSSID. My last but not least mention is multicast, uh, specifically multiple DNS. That's something that comes up when people have AirPlay, Apple TVs, uh, Alexa devices. There's all sorts of things that use MDNS that I wouldn't even know used it. And if you filter for DNS, MDNS, I recommend going and right clicking in Wireshark for your column preferences and adding, come on, there we go the information field specifically because the information field will give you a much clearer picture of what device might actually be sending those MDNS queries. And that's just scratching the surface on the potential uh, destruction that MDNS can cause. I recommend seeing Brian Ward's talk a couple years ago from WLPC. He goes way into more detail than I have time to today. So how do we take all these factors that can impact your throughput and put them together in a way that's actually useful? Well, I would start here. So is your throughput issue something that you discovered as a result of a quality issue with an application that you're using? 
If so, start identifying specifically what applications are affected and what clients are affected. So for example, is it just Apple clients on WebEx or is it just Android clients on Zoom? Uh, do that type of investigation. If not, start gathering your hardware information for APs and clients and figure out your MCS index rates and move on from there. If the issue only happens when you have lots of clients with an AP, I would recommend specifically investigating the maximum capability of the APs and how many clients you realistically expect to support. And if not, continue gathering your information about your APs and clients and run your iPerf test. And then I would move into the RF causes that I went through. And finally, if the RF causes check out, move into the protocol-driven causes for throughput degradation. Um, I've just got a slide here with some sources you might find helpful. I think I'll leave that up for maybe like 10 more seconds. Uh, I guess if I have time, one thing to mention about the specific, come on, let's go back. One thing I wanted to mention about the hardware capabilities, uh, the hardware capability, the size of the radio and the spatial streams, it may differ per channel and band. So I encourage you to check the data sheet because for example, some vendors might restrict the radio capabilities based on PoE levels. There's other things that may go, go on. So when you're actually collecting your data for your APs and clients, uh, definitely make sure you check your data sheets and understand the realistic limitations that you may be encountering based on PoE, software version, et cetera. So um, with that, I guess I'm a little light on time. That's all I had. <laughs>